Good morning to all of you, and thanks for uh, inviting us to make these uh, introducing remarks to our discussion. I'm uh, here to talk about European Telecom, so I will go straight forward to, uh, to the message. And my purpose is to do that to uh, basic questions. So the first question, and we are very lucky. We are living in extraordinary times. Never in the history of uh, the human beings, such an accumulation of technology has happened at the same time. And everything is being changed. Everything, every part of the human lives is being changed. Out of that revolution, what would you think, what should, which of these products would you think is growing more than 50% every year? Do you think those are the iPhones, cars, Instagrammers, or none of them? Well, the answer is that none of them. Data is growing 59% year on year. In fact, data is accelerating its growth. And uh, far beyond the big data revolution, we are starting the era of cognitive revolution. So it is expected that it will grow by 11 times, not 11%, but 11 times in the next five years. That puts pressure on telecom operators as the old networks, the ones that were designed to produce voice, are not coping anymore to produce the amount of data that is required. So brand new networks are required, are required and those are um, 4G networks and fiber networks. So, pointing towards Europe, how relevant is the sector for Europe? We have uh, now seen, it's clear, that the sector is very relevant for the Industrial Revolution, for this fourth Industrial Revolution. But how is the sector in Europe? Would you say that the sector is prepared? Is this a relevant sector? How much does the telco sector contribute to European GDP? Less than 1%, 2%, or more than 3%? The right answer is that it is more than 3%, it's 5%. This sector is either an accelerator of the Industrial Revolution or a bottom lake. We represent more than 700,000 workers, employers, employees, and we pay our taxes here at a tax average tax rate of 23%. So we are a very relevant sector for the economy. Or either we contribute to accelerate this deployment of technology or we become a bottleneck. Let's keep going. How the sector is performing within a broader value chain, like the ICT hypersector? Is our share being increased or decreased? How has the telco share of economic profit in the ecosystem evolved? Would you think that it has increased by 10 percentage points, remain stable, or decrease? The answer, unfortunately, is that it has been decreased. This sector is becoming less relevant. And in fact, we are lagging behind other players of the hyper sector. The over the top companies have increased their market share of the hyper sector. And bad news is that there is no European companies among those. So we are losing relevance. Next questions. Why is that? Are European telecoms an attractive sector for investors? At the time, the European Commission estimated that 500 billion euros of additional capex is needed to meet the 2025 connectivity targets. How would you say that since 2012, the European, sorry. How would you say that the European telcos market cap has evolved during the last six years? Would you say that we have increased our market cap, remained stable, or decreased our market cap? The answer is that we have decreased our market cap. And that's not something specific for the sector because in other places of the world, like the US or Asia, they have increased. So, there are only two European players among the top 10 telecommunication companies on earth. And out of the top 20 ICT uh, global companies, there is no European player. That has something to say around innovation. We are losing ground. We are losing ground and Europe needs to catch up. We have seen that data volumes are growing. And in fact, mobile data traffic is growing more than 50% every year. In the meantime, what would you say has happened to our revenues? Would you say that we have been growing revenues, become stable, or decreased? The answer is that we have decreased revenues. And unfortunately, again, we are losing ground. And it doesn't look that this is a sector issue worldwide, because in other places of the world, revenues have either remained stable or have been growing. So this sector is not condemned to be relevant. It all depends on the incentives. Now let's talk about incentives. What would you think 
that telco prices have been doing in Europe for the last years, for the last 20 years, let's say. Would you think that this sector has been able to maintain competitiveness with CPI, exceed, decline slightly below CPI, or decline significantly below CPI? The answer is that this has been a massive deflationary sector. In half, it has been the most deflationary sector out of all the sectors in Europe. And again, that means that uh, in spite of the fact that we are giving more value, that we are giving more relevant products, regulation or artificial deflationary pressures has put a significant amount of pressure on our revenues. And as a result, let's come to our returns. During this period of time, during the last six years, what would you think that returns have happened to our industry? Have we increased returns? Have we remained stable? Or have we decreased? The answer is that unfortunately, again, we have decreased. And again, this is not something specific to the sector itself. It's a specific to a region. Because in other places of the world, this has not been happening in the same manner. And at a time, that CAPEX, because of these brand new networks that are required to build this huge data capacity that is needed, CAPEX is going to be growing, most likely, and has been growing in this period. We have not been able to get adequate returns. And again, it doesn't look like the right incentives are in place. Is this a matter of competition? Would you say that we have too little or too much competition? How many telcos companies do you think there are in Europe? And what about the UK? Do you think that there are more than 100, 200, 300, or more than 400 telco operators in Europe? The answer is that there is more than 450 mobile operators, just mobile operators in Europe, and there is more than 30 in the UK. And I'm mentioning the UK because a transaction was blocked in the UK because supposedly it was a consolidation for four to three players. And we are not counting on these numbers, competition coming from the over-the-top services. Because at the end of the day, the day over-the-top services are exactly the same service that an IP, voice, or messaging service. So the point here is that artificial competition is being created, and as a result, it, as a result of that, there is lack of innovation. At a time that those networks are needed, these ultra-broadband networks, how would you say we benchmark against other regions in terms of ultra-broadband networks? Would you think that our networks are going faster, slower, or at the same pace than other places or networks like China or the US? The answer is that we are going at a much lower play, uh, pace. There is much more fiber in other places of the world, so we are not building effectively this brand new infrastructure. And talking about 5G, we run the risk of committing the same errors that were committed at the time of the UNTS auction. We need the right industrial policy behind those deployments. That might look too pessimistic, but in fact, we can turn around the situation. There is one place in Europe in which there is more fiber than in China or in the US. In Spain, we have 74% penetration of fiber. There is more fiber in Spain than in the sum of the UK, Germany, Italy, France, and Portugal together, which proves that with the right incentives, infrastructure-based competition can be fostered. Finally, is this a significant opportunity for Europe? This massive transformation, this digitalization, how much value do you think it can create for Europe? Are we talking about 300 billion euros, 500 billion euros, or more than 700 billion euros? The answer is that we are talking about more than 700 billion euros, which is more than 70% of the size of the GDP of a country like Spain, which means that basically the contribution to this sector, to the GDP of Europe, can double in the next years if we have the right ecosystem. And that can be done, that proves the recent effort that Europe has done on GDPR. So diagnosis, this is not working. Europe is lagging behind. There is the lack of an industrial vision. The ancien regime, regulatory and competition environment, is no longer valid. The voice regulation cannot be extrapolated to the data world. It is not too late, and this is an opportunity that just can't be missed. And finally, the proposal. Deregulate, deregulate, deregulate. Same service, same rule, same obligation. A spectrum for the long term. 
a pro-investment framework, and certainly a 21st century digital regulation based on European values. Thank you very much.